Remember Lords of the Fallen? Yeah, my videos take way too long to make. But anyway, I am a game completionist, and I love getting all achievements in games. Because of that, I have seen a lot of incredibly difficult, rare, and simply ridiculous achievements. But none of this can even come close to the incredibly long and grindy achievements of Lords of the Fallen. Consider this video one huge guide on all endings, questlines, bosses, and achievements. However, I will only cover achievements that have this golden outline, which means that a very small amount of players manage to get them. That's why I won't go over every single boss in too much detail, as they are extremely easy for Souls-like. No, but seriously, it's not normal that I can beat a boss on my first try in a game that's supposed to be hard. The most popular questline you have probably already completed is Without Purpose, which revolves around Tech Ear. All you have to do to get this achievement is simply speak to him every single time you meet him and then defeat Judge Cleric. However, what I should mention is that after doing so, you can pick up his entire set outside of the Judge Cleric's arena. The reason why I mentioned this is because I completely forgot about his armor and started a New Game Plus run. And I really hope that this one small mistake will not have any dire consequences on future achievements. I absolutely despise this game. Another quest you most likely completed is Andreas of Abs mission. Although in addition to simply speaking to him, you have to interact with his stigma, which is unlocked after you progress the Iron Wafer's quest that, just like last time, requires to simply talk to him and nothing more. Although I know that for some of you watching this video, talking to a person is already a challenge. Now you can summon this man to help you defeat the Light Reaper. Uh, it doesn't matter if you die, the most important part is to beckon him. After doing so, you'll be rewarded with another boss fight. To be honest, I didn't expect anything less from Andreas. I mean, when a person tells you it's a privilege to be friends with him, you know he's a Twitter user. And thus, for committing such awful crimes against humanity, you have the right to kill him and complete his questline. The next questline I completed revolves around the tortured prisoner. He's stupid. I know that's not the most popular one, as it's quite complex and spans across the entire game. To complete it, all you have to do is to free the tortured prisoner, talk to her outside Pieta's arena, defeat the progeny, then get the giant eyeball, give her the giant eyeball, get the noble woman set, speak to her in the noble woman set, get the charred letter, and okay, I think you get it. Once you defeat the king, the tortured prisoner will reveal to you the epic and mind-blowing plot twist that she is the queen. And because you killed her husband, she also dies. Wow, amazing, 10 out of 10. But if seriously, I understood from the very first stigma that she is the queen. Let me know down in the comments if I'm not the only one. Now, the only thing left to do was to interact with a deer and get the radiance ending. Because I'm a normal person. To complete the radius ending, you have to fight a deer who is an extremely easy boss. I mean, all you have to do is to kill a bunch of his followers while he tries to convince you to not kill him, which is not only boring, but also very stupid from a logical standpoint. Because if you take too long, a deer one-shots you. Now, the question is, why doesn't he kill the player as soon as he steps into the Rogo realm? This guy is supposed to be a god of death and destruction, and the only thing he does during the fight is talking to the player. Very boring boss fight that looks like it was made in 10 minutes before the game's release. Uh, important thing to note, after you consume a deer, make sure to go back to his shrine, and here you will find his remembrance that will grant you powerful inferno spells. Speaking of spells and other items, you will have to get all of them. There is an achievement for every category of items, the hardest one being trophies for getting all armors and weapons. The main problem of these achievements is that after you collected every item found in the world, you're only halfway done, as the items dropped by enemies you kill also count towards the achievement. The problem is that the chance of an enemy dropping at least something are extremely low, around 1% if you don't have any items boosting it. And that's for one item. 
and that can be either a piece of armor or a weapon or just a simple consumable like a mana stone or an ammunition pouch. Of course for now I won't be farming enemies as I don't have enough consumables that boost my item discovery. But later on, after multiple New Game Plus loops, I will take on this task. For now, I will collect all the spells and armor I can get from boss remembrances and regular shops. I began by getting all Umbral spells, as they are least of them in the game. And because I have already brought all spells from boss remembrances and collected all non-shop spells, I just had to farm some souls to buy the last ones for Mo'ulu. And that's our first collector's achievement. Pretty easy so far. The next achievement I decided to tackle is fully upgrading my Sanguinaris. I have already fully upgraded my lamp because in order to max it out you only need 2 items, but in order to upgrade your healing you need 20 saintly quintessences, 4 of which I have missed. Now don't get me wrong, I tried exploring every location to my best, but there are some tricky places I couldn't get to because I either didn't see them or got distracted by an enemy, so it's most likely that you also missed some of these items. Although sometimes I managed to miss giant chests in the very first locations of the game. The first one missing quintessence was located near the entrance of the castle on this small platform. Similarly to the first one, the second item was located on a small umbral platform at the path of devotion that I completely missed. The third quintessence really surprised me, as it was in the mines lying on the ground like a regular item. This is the only instance when this happens in the entire game. The last quintessence was in a very annoying place, right under one of the elevators guarded by a ton of enemies. The worst part is that if when trying to soul flay an item while there's an enemy in front of you, the enemy will get soul flayed, which is obviously not what we want. After a lot of running around, I got the last quintessence and fully upgraded my Sanguinarix to get the achievement. Yes, there it is, 3.5% of players, alright. Now we could move on to items like throwables, ammo, rings and armor. Although I was understanding that I couldn't get all of them, because nearly every questline rewards you with some kind of ring, armor or weapon. So my mission was to collect all items on the map before I begin the new game plus zero run. So like that the only thing I'll have to worry about is completing quests. And thus, I started checking and comparing every entry of the Fextral Life wiki with the items in my inventory to see what I was missing and where. I began by getting every ammo type. First, the Frost Arrows by climbing up this umbral ladder and then the Cinder Arrows in the super secret location. No, seriously, how do you even find places like these without guides? This granted me the Ammo Collector achievement that was unlocked by a surprisingly small amount of players, considering how easy it is to get. Unfortunately, I couldn't get all probos because I didn't have the fire grenade that could be brought only from Damaros. But she's dead because I chose the Radiance ending. Next, I obtained the Inner Serpent Pendant that was hidden in a secret area in the mess of the Hallowed Brothers. You see, when going upstairs, there will be a crack in the wall, and by going in the Umbral Realm, you can actually get access to the small room where will be an Umbral Stigma and the path to the Pendant. Umbral Stigmas are also very important, because there is an extremely rare achievement for viewing all of them. Another missable location that can be accessed via the Umbral Realm is in Lower Cholera. Here you can find the Grievous Ring, which is rather useless to be honest, but is the last ring you can find in the world. The remaining rings can be obtained by completing Damarose's questline, again. I'm beginning to think this mission is going to be a problem. Now that we have collected all lootable items, the last thing to do was farm some souls and clear every shop. Because I haven't completed many questlines, the only trader available for me was Donmeyer. And now that I've brought almost everything from him, all that's left to do is to speak to Donmeyer in the Mother's Lull and finish the quest. 
The main problem with this is the fact that I'm playing a Souls-like, which means that every quest is extremely convoluted, illogical and simply ridiculous. Like here for example, in order to fully complete the Exactors quest and get the achievement, I have to go into Sunless Klein and get Dunmire's set. I find it great that you can get each character set after completing their mission, but it's in such a random and unrelated location. I get it if his set was left on places where we previously interacted with him, and I get it if this happened only during one questline, but this random item placement makes absolutely no sense. Now that Don Meyer has fully succumbed to his Umbro addiction, and I got a hold of all his items, this allowed me to get all the Radiant spells. The only thing left to do to complete my spell collection is to get all Inferno spells, but to do that, I needed to progress, you're never gonna guess it, Damarose's questline. So logically, I should progress her quest during my next New Game Plus Zero run. But the thing is that many endings and characters' missions conflict with each other. And for this New Game Plus run, I wanted to achieve as many objectives as possible, including the incredibly complicated Umbro ending. The problem with Damaros is that her questline is incompatible with many others, including the Umbro ending. This means that this one quest not only locks multiple collector's achievements, but also doesn't allow me to get achievements for completing other quests, which means that I will have to end up doing an entire run specifically for this one quest. But for my first run, I decided to tackle Byron's, Stodman's, Isaac's, Kukajin's and Durstan's quest, and of course, the Umbro ending. The important part here is to begin the New Game Plus Zero, as it's specifically made for completionists like me, because unlike New Game Plus One, it completely resets the world. This means that I will have to re-unlock every single vestige point and speak again to every character, which is obviously a bit annoying, although I have to be honest, the most irritating part of New Game Plus is that I can't immediately kill the Light Reaper, as he's an essential boss for completing certain quests. After this, I also picked up the Flayed Skin, as it's an essential item for completing Isaac's quest, that, upon completion, will unlock this Umbral Gate and grant access to Paladin Isaac's set. Thankfully, the first levels were a breeze. Sister Delith didn't even have time to transition into her second phase. Speaking of which, these bosses, that later become regular enemies, are actually very useful, because each time you defeat them, they drop a random piece of their set. This strategy is significantly better than simply farming them at in-game locations. Better in terms of fun and gameplay, not efficiency. Speaking of efficiency, I speedrun my way through Pilgrim's Perch. Of course, I stopped to save Gerlinda and buy some items from Damaros while I still have the chance to do so. The boss after this was the Congregator of Flesh, who reminded me how good it looked on the game's Steam page and what this boss actually ended up being. I think saying that I was disappointed will be an understatement. Now that we have access to the Forsaken Fen, we can free Kukujin by using a Radiance healing spell. It is important to free her right now, because if you defeat the Harsh Saint, the quest will be automatically failed. So first speak to Kukujin at Skyrus Bridge and die to the Harsh Saint, like that she will be available as a summon to help you kill the boss. Once you obliterate the boss without her help, an invoice will be added to your inventory showing that you are in depth and need to pay Kukujin for her services. Uh, that came out wrong. You need to pay her for helping you to beat the boss, even though she barely did anything. And if you don't do that, you'll fail the quest. Speaking of missions, it is obviously very important to keep talking to the Iron Wafer Byron and Damaros each time you see them, but I'm not really going to tell you all these locations because they're impossible to miss unless you have the Blindness 3 effect. 
Also, one important thing to note is that once you defeat the Harsh Saint, do not cleanse the first beacon, because if you do so, Damaros will disrespect you, and we don't want that. After that, I simply defeated every single mini boss up until Lower Colra. Here you'll have to interact with this Umbral Stigma as it's another part of Isaac's quest. And speak to Durstan near the Vester site. Now we can safely defeat the Progeny, who was another boss that I had high hopes for but turned out to be pretty lame. And of course continue to Sunless Klein. That is extremely annoying to go through and is the only moment where I wish this game had a minimap of some sort. Because when going through it, I was beginning to think I'm playing PT. Bro, it's the third time I'm going through this meth lab filled with green piss, what the f- Eventually, you'll get access to the system location. And here the stupidest part of Byron Quest kicks in. You see, after defeating the Skin Stealer, instead of taking the elevator to Upper Kalra, you instead need to drain the water and get access to the Revelation Depths. And this is such a strange condition to fail a quest. I get it if you don't bring the character's items they request or you Man, don't exhaust you, their dialogue, but here you just walk 2 meters after beating the boss and you immediately fail. This is so dumb, especially because there is no warning and no hints to what consequences this one elevator can have. I get it that quest lines are supposed to be stupidly complex and confusing in Souls likes, but this is an extremely new level. Anyway, after dropping the bridge and unlocking a shortcut in the depths, you will eventually find Winterberry, that is apparently a child that transformed into a mini Valiant Gargoyle or something. Here we can buy all items from her except for Katrine's Pendant, because it's sold for a special currency called Useless Coins. But why do you even need the Pendant? Well, let me tell you the epic lore of this questline. Byron has the big sad because his wife died and the only thing that reminds him of her is the pendant, but he somehow lost it. Stupid. After telling him that the one who has it is a child, Byron lets Winterberry keep the pendant because it makes her happy and move on with his life. That's why the achievement is called moving on. You can find both of them near the location where you meet the tortured prisoner. This gives you access to Byron's set that you can buy from Winterberry and an Umbro Eye that supposedly belonged to Catherine before she, you know, died. Also, Winterberry can sell you an infinite amount of charmed paws, which will be very useful for farming later. Speaking of the Umbro, the Revelation Depths are an extremely important location if you want to get the Umbro ending. Once you and Kukujin defeat the Unbroken Promise, you can get access to this weird looking well of sorts that asks for scorings. Now what you need to do is go back to Moulu and buy this clump for 50 Umbro scorings. Then once you go back to this location, you can now enter the Mother's Low and get Damarose's Seed Pot. As you already guessed, you have to use it on Damaros. That's the reason why we progressed her questline. Upon usage, the seed will kill her. Yeah, this is what you get for locking so many achievements away from me. Now, if we go back to the Mother's Lull, we will receive Gerlinda's seed pod. She is our next target. The reason why we're killing random NPCs is because inside the Mother's Lull, their corpses can be used as connectors that pull the Umbral platform in the middle. But before going for Gerlinde, we have many other things to do. First of all, the Thief of the Chill Curse. Here we can not only find an Umbral Stigma that progresses Isaac's quest, but also Durstan near a campfire. Now, don't leave the thief just yet because the Hollow Crow is yet another boss that we have to defeat with Kokujin. And also make sure to die to the Light Reaper. Yet another optional location that is required to complete Isaac's quest is the Path of Devotion. Here you can not only find the last Umbro Stigma, but also Paladin Isaac's boss fight that uses many very annoying PvP strats like this goddamn Radiant spell that is extremely unfair. Once you defeat the boss, you get rewarded with an Umbro tinged flayed skin. Remember the door when we got the flayed skin? 
Well now, if we warp back to the village and go back there, we can actually unlock the door. So if we go back here... Wait, what? Uh, am I stuck? Yeah, apparently I got stuck, but it's fine, I could just exit and load back in. Oh wait, that doesn't fix the problem. Maybe I can load back to the previous save? Well, no. But it was written Path of Devotion. What? After a bit of thinking, I equipped the Mana Regen Ring and began casting Infernal Spells to stack up the fire effect that little by little will damage me and... Oh wait, the Red Ripper just came. So that's why he's in the game. That makes sense. As I was saying, now we can unlock this door and get access to the place where Isaac died and thus his full set. Alright, now we can actually continue the story and access the Mance of the Hallowed Brothers. The only thing of interest here is this secret subterranean location where we can obtain the damage standard that is an item needed for Stoneman's questline. The next important location is the Tower of Penance. Here we can once more defeat the Carrion Knight and get another piece of his set and weapon. The reason why I'm putting this specific mini boss out of all others is because there are only around 5 Carrion Knights in this entire game, as they are unique to the Penance Tower. Because of this, farming Bruh. their equipment is much harder and time consuming. The Penance Tower itself was a really short location that I completed under 20 minutes. The only important thing is that Reinhold will have to be defeated with Kukujin once more. I think at this point you get that every boss will have to be killed with Kukujin in order to complete our quest. Now that another cool looking boss that turned out to be trash is defeated, we can now move on to the Abbey of the Hallowed Sisters and meet Stomon. Not only does this encounter progress his quest, but he also sells the last throwable I have to collect, which is the Holy Grenade. 18 achievements left out of 63, which sounds rather small, but as you'll see, we have so much more stuff to go through. Next, we can fight this incredibly easy mini boss. I definitely didn't start panicking and almost died. Bro, stop healing, you stupid! Stoneman's second location will be in this park of sorts with the goofy enemy. Here we can give him the standard and buy some missing items. Now we can get the rune of a deer, but because we've been following the way first questline, he will come and steal it like a certain type of people. And also, the Rapturous Huntress miniboss is very important because there is literally one single enemy like her in the entire game besides the miniboss that can drop her set. So it's helpful to get lucky here in order to not farm this one enemy for hours. Huntress Spear and Trousers, okay that's good, that's good. I'm especially happy about the weapon because there are less weapons than armors in the game. I can get this achievement quicker. After defeating her, we can continue to the small area and get this saintly quintessence. This will then spawn a special abyss enemy that if ever stops teleporting and finally dies, will drop a tattered banner. This is the final piece of Stone's quest. Now that he has both banners, we can see that at the Empyrean he impaled himself with it. Why does every character need to die in Souls Likes? No, Alexander, this is so sad. But oh well, at least I got my achievement. Speaking of achievements, it's about time we continue the Umbro ending. Now that we have the Rune of a Deer, we can use Gerlin the Sea Pot to kill her. If you're doing this for the first time, I recommend you complete Sparky's questline, so like that you can still upgrade your equipment and suck at runes. Also, if at this point you're thinking that there are some things missing regarding different questlines, don't worry, I will make a separate, more detailed video on every single quest and ending you can get, if this game becomes popular again. The next boss we'll have to defeat will be Judge Clary, and I don't think I have to explain that you once again need to summon Kukujin to help you with the boss. Also at this point the game kind of becomes a boss rush, and that's why after 2 minutes of walking, we can already fight the Light Reaper, for real this time. But we have a small problem here. 
You see, I was doing both Isaac's and Kukujin's quest lines. But one thing I completely forgot about is that in order to complete both of these quests, you have to summon them to help you kill the Light Reaper. The problem here is that unlike with Andreas of Ebb, you have to defeat the Light Reaper while one of them is summoned. Meaning, I can't spawn both of them and can't complete both quests. So I decided to choose Kukujin because I have already paid her way too much money just to fail the quest. Also, the Light Reaper drops an Umbral Parasite, which is a key component to getting the Umbral ending. 30 seconds of walking later, we have yet another boss fight that is somehow harder than the Light Reaper. Mostly because of the trash camera. Like, what is this? Defeating the Iron Wafer gives us the Rune of a Deer. Now we have to bring it to the Mother's Rule to transform it into a Withered Rune of a Deer and get Melchior's Seed Pot. As you already realized, now we have to go to Bramis Castle, also known as Literal Hell. Here we can find another Umbro Stigma showing Durston get eaten by a Mimic, and here we can also find his entire set. Now the only thing left at Bramis Castle is to defeat the Southern Monarch. This is also the last boss we have to fight with Kukujin. And while we're on the topic of the Southern Monarch, he was actually changed in a recent, okay, maybe not very recent patch. And to be honest, the boss fight is now actually harder, and even forced me to concentrate and stop fooling around to actually defeat the boss. Once the king is dead, you receive the final invoice from Kukujin. After paying her for the final bounty, she will inform you that her business in Mornstead is done. Apparently, she was also doing a 100% completionist run. This will lead to Kukujin leaving Mornstead and giving you her full set? Because apparently she's doing a no damage run. I really don't know why she leaves all of her equipment behind if she wants to continue being a bounty hunter, but whatever, I got my achievement and that's the only thing I care about. Going back to this incredibly cool looking place, here we can find out that Durston survived and then got executed by Rogar people. Are they people? Anyway, why bring back a cool character to then kill them in the stupidest way possible? Imagine if a movie series did that. Oh wait. Now of course, the main reason we came here is a deer, who will always roast you for what you're doing, and try to convert you. But little did he know that the only religion I follow is the perfect games page on Steam, so we can use the final seed pot to evaporate him or something. But what about the withered rune we got? Well, if you go back to the Thief of Chill Curse, you can actually find the Iron Wafer in the Umbro because you killed him in Axiom. Basically, he has the big sad and realizes that Walter didn't become Heisenberg, he was Heisenberg from the very beginning. Now, because this info is obviously fake and the real villain of the series was Skylar all along, we can use the Withered Rune to kill him and get our second Umbro Parasite. Now we can insert these parasites into those pillars around Moulu. Then he will tell us that the last thing left to do is to kill Pieta. As if killing every single character you will encounter wasn't enough. So after we soul flay Pieta, we get some epic story revelations that uh, I don't understand because I ignored this game's lore. But apparently Elian is some sort of entity that was kept inside Pieta and that's why she's so similar to her. I know I probably gave a heart attack to the people who actually know the lore of the game, but there's no info on the wiki, so um, I just made stuff up. At first glance, Elian just looks like a simple reskin of Pieta with some umbral elements added, but that's only the first phase. Once you damage her enough, she will spawn a reflection of herself. Now if you think that you can just ignore the reflection and attack Elian, you'll be heavily disappointed. This means that most of the time you'll have to fight two bosses at the same time. Yeah, the Godskin Duo didn't teach the gaming industry a thing. No, but to be honest, this is a good double boss fight. You have one hyper-aggressive enemy and a ranged one. Once you defeat the copy of a copy of a boss, Elian gets staggered allowing you to get some hits, although most of the time I fail to get the crit. I think that's another distinct feature of Souls-likes. 
Another feature I don't like is that when Elian spawns her clone, she deals undodgeable damage. Also, what's up with all the eyeballs in this arena? Like, what is going on? How do you even dodge this garbage? Yeah, as you already noticed, near the end this boss fight becomes really hard. All attacks are sped up and to be honest, it really feels like you're fighting two bosses at once. But eventually, after a few tries, I managed to defeat Elian and get her Umbral Parasite. Also here you can get her Remembrance, which is the last boss Remembrance I needed. Now you can insert the last Umbral Parasite into the pillar, after which Moulu gives you the option to enter the Mother's Lull. Now here it's very important that you do not enter this location unless you have brought everything from him. So that's why I make sure to spend all my Umbro scorings and get Elian's set before accepting Moulu's offer. Moulu was the last and fourth target who had to die. Now we can finally reach the Umbro Mother using different bodies of characters we have previously killed. First is Damrose. Second is Gerlinde. The third is the Iron Wafer. And fourth, Maudu. We reached the Umbral Mother. Having proven their devotion, the putrid mother's champion enters her embrace. The veil between realities is soldered, and the shadow of Umbro descends over creation? Wait, what? Did I just end Earth? I thought this would be a good ending, or at least semi-good. Bro, I just doomed all of humanity. Just like for completing any other ending, you unlock a completely new class. But once you load back, you realize that everyone is gone. The Umbro and Axiom were merged together, letting the dead walk amongst the living. And you know very well their attitude towards new visitors. The main hub is completely empty, and the calming music sounds much more sinister and tragic. Everyone you knew, every character that helped you in your hard journey are now dead. For you, there are only tools used to grant you access to the Mother's Embrace, become her Umbro Champion and bring doom to all living beings. And this is the true ending of Lords of the Fallen, a grim and dark end to an already ravaged and miserable world. Now this is cool and all, but I didn't get my achievements. I mean, of course, I got the achievement for defeating Elian and getting the Umbro ending, but I seriously hope that by doing so, I would simultaneously get the achievement for defeating all bosses and viewing all stigmas. And after looking into it, I understood that I've defeated all Remembrance bosses and all mini bosses, but not all NPCs. You see, whenever you fail someone's quest lines, they are characters that can initiate a boss battle with you. This is the case of Demerose if you cleanse beacons, for instance. Well, it turns out that if you fail Kukujin's and the Tortured Prisoner's quest, they will start a boss fight, meaning that I will have to redo their quest lines and fail near the end to get a crappy boss battle. As for the achievement for viewing all Umbro stigmas, and you're never gonna guess it, I need to complete Damarose's quest! This one character locks me from 7 achievements, this is insane! Or so I thought. You see, most of the characters' questlines involve 
around you investigating some sort of umbral stigma. This is the case of Isaac's and Durston's quests, but Dama Rose's quest don't have an umbral stigma. Which means that somewhere in the world I have missed a stigma. But how is that possible if I've explored absolutely everything? Well, you see, when you defeat the Light Reaper, he not only spawns a stigma at the place where he dies, but also in all other locations where he attacked you. So after checking all of them, I realized that the missing stigma was in the Thief of Chill Curse, that displays the battle between the Light Reaper and the Hollow Crow. Although, why do they both survive after this battle? We shall never know. But the most important part is that this granted me the Lingering Moments achievement. And this means that I was ready for my second New Game Plus Zero loop. This time I wanted to finally complete Damarose's quest and by consequence get the Inferno ending. In addition to this I also wanted to properly finish Paladin Isaac's quest and kill the two remaining bosses which are Kukujin and the Tortured Prisoner. And normally this should be the last New Game Plus I'll have to do. Notice how I said normally. The beginning of the run was as usual. I absolutely destroyed Pieta and the Red Ripper for no particular no, reason. Fucking place. Trash. Then, once I got to the Fen, I once again freed Kukujin and defeated the Harsh Saint with her. But, but this time, instead of being the good Samaritan you are, don't pay the invoice Kukujin sends you. This will make her disrespect you and attack in the form of a boss in Upper Kalra. Of course, while doing that, speak with Damaros until she spawns near the Shrine of a Deer. Now we have to defeat the Infernal Enchantress and the Progeny to get their flesh. In addition to it, kill the Skin Stealer and using the key you got from the mini boss, obtain the saw and give it to Damaros. This will unlock more items for purchase, including the last Infernal spell for the Infernal Adept achievement. Now just progress the game as normal, just make sure to proceed Isaac's questline by interacting with the stigmas, and eventually defeat him. I also decided to do Gerlinda's quest by giving her the tablet. Unlike with Sparky's quest, this doesn't give you an achievement, but an extremely useful rune that reduces all weapon weight by zero. Once again, get the Rune of a Deer and defeat Josh Cleric to get access to the Light Reaper. Now defeat the demon with the help of Isaac and finish the quest to unlock a new class and an achievement. Now as you can see, you also received the Light Reaper Flash, which is the last piece of meat Damaros needs. By bringing her all three items, you can also buy the last three rings and get the Trinket Collector achievement. Also while going to the castle, I've noticed that the Iron Wafer uses only Umbral attacks because I didn't progress his mission and didn't give him the Rune of a Deer. Anyway, kill the king and finish Damarose's quest by collecting her set. But that's not all, because you defeated the Southern Monarch and didn't give the Tortured Prisoner the Swaddling Cloth, you will fail her quest and thus Sophizia will attack you at the top of the castle. Defeating her grants me the non shall be spared achievement, as she was the last boss I needed to kill. Also, because I wasn't cleansing any beacons, Adir actually respects me and upgrades my rune. Now you will have to revisit all beacons and use the empowered rune of Adir on them to assure that he can come back. Of course, the hallowed sentinels realize that you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, but at this point a bunch of mini bosses isn't even an obstacle. After upgrading the last beacon, enter Judge Cleric's mind. Uh, don't ask me how and why, I'm as confused as you are. And use the rune of a deer on this girl who now becomes the new body of the god of death and destruction. Amazing ending. And by amazing, I mean trash. trash. And now the only thing left to do is to collect all the weapons, all armor, and kill a boss in co op. I was actually quite confused that I didn't get that achievement, but that's because someone needs to join my game and not the other way around. So eventually, after waiting around 5 years, someone joined my game and we quickly defeated the Medacious Visage. Alright, now we have to get every helmet, chestplate, trousers and boots for the ironclad achievement and get all weapons, shields and catalysts for the weapon collector achievement. 
Thankfully, I found this Excel document that is really useful for collecting basically everything. The link for it will be in the description. Now, after checking every single item on the list with what I have in my inventory, I realized that I am missing the Torso Fungus, Scored Sister Grab, and the Kinragor Guardian Armor. All of these drop from enemies, except for the entire Failed Pilgrim set. As you just saw earlier in the video, every quest finishes by you collecting the character set. Every single one, except for Tekir's questline. Normally the game informs you that he left Mornstead right after you defeat Josh Kalerik, and gives you the advancement, but because of that, I didn't even bother searching for any reward. This means I will have to do another New Game Plus run just to get this one set. Well, not really, because I didn't have enough Umbral scorings to buy the Last Remembrance weapons, and 2 out of 3 missing items could be dropped by the according mini bosses. So I once again defeated the Light Reaper, this time in the tutorial, and watched a random weird cutscene. And then, when fighting the Scorch Sister for the fourth time, my prayers were answered. Okay, let's see. Yes, yes, there it is. Perfect, exactly what I wanted, that's, that's really good. Then I defeated the Congregator, Hush Saint, Progeny, and Reinhold. I bet you didn't even notice that one of these was reused footage from before. Of course, I was speaking with the Pilgrim, and after Josh Cleric's boss fight, you can go up this collapsed tower and get the failed Pilgrim set. Finally, Jesus, I, I can't believe I had to do a new game plus run just for that. Alright, now I just need to get the other two chest plates, and here the very weird and wacky enemy drop system kicks in. You see, only certain enemies drop certain items. For example, at first I was farming the fungal bowmen in the Revelation Depths, but they drop only bows and knives. The bowman that drops items from his set is located in the cistern. Of course, this farming method is much more annoying because the enemy is really far away from the sea. But eventually, after a lot of farming, I finally got this goddamn chestplate. Oh, oh yes, finally, dude. I couldn't stand this place anymore. Oh, there it is. It, it's like the worst armor in the game, but I still got it. One step closer to 100%. Speaking of 100%, I got all weapons. At this point, I just had to buy all remaining boss weapons, and because I already killed all of them, I finally had enough umbral scorings to get this achievement. Buy this and this. Yes, there we go. All weapons. Now I just need to buy the Melted Crown. Now the only thing I have to get is the King Ragger armor. And after killing the mini boss, I didn't get it. Um, it, it's fine, it, it's not that bad. I can easily farm it. Two thousand years later. Why can't you drop the mother f Dang! One eternity later. Why is it impossible? It's just not, why not? You STUPID BASTARD! Also, I think now will be the best moment to talk about the setup I used to farm all of these items. First of all, we have two bountiful rings, as they stack together. The second is the Umbro Eye that boosts item discovery while in Umbro, and third, these skeletal paws that I brought from Winterberry. Remember how I said that she will be useful, like, half an hour ago? Yeah, there you go. The farming spot for these guardians was at the first vestige point of the thief, and after a lot, and I mean a lot of time, I finally got it. Oh, yes! Oh, I thought this day would never come, to be honest. As you already noticed, I didn't get the Ironclad achievement, and that's because the actual last item was the Melted Crown, and once I brought it... Wait. Why didn't I get the achievement? But... But why? What, what am I missing? I, I don't understand. I'm pretty sure I have everything. But what am I missing? Well, it turned out, I didn't have everything. You see, in the Penance Tower, there is one single Carrion Knight that is different from the others. It is the Blessed Carrion Knight. And the only thing that can actually tell you he's different from the others is his special helmet and the fact that he drops more souls. And as pointed out by this commenter, I had to get his unique set too. 
At first, I actually started farming the wrong enemy, because I just couldn't believe that he was situated in such a bad spot. Like, getting to this man is already a task. The huge distance from the seedling, including the fact that he rarely dropped anything, made farming him absolutely awful. Why is he still not dead? Oh my god, this takes so much time. Come on, just die already, please. Oh, Wait, where's my achievement? Where is it? What the fuck? And I was once again lost and not knowing what to do. Nothing what I did worked. But then I decided to revisit the same comment and noticed the grace of a deer skull. I had the mask, but I didn't have the skull. And to be honest, it was hidden very well. It was in Brahma's castle hanging from the ceiling. And just like that, I got all armor pieces in Lords of the Fallen. Bro, can you just focus on the thing? What, whatever, I'll just, use, I'll just do it manually. Ironclad. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, whatever, I don't care anymore. Take all my souls. I, I don't need them. Oh. But, as you noticed, I didn't get the final achievement for getting all achievements. And that's because I actually lied to you. You see, when I defeated that mini boss with a co-op partner, I didn't get the achievement. I just made it look like I had it to not ruin the surprise. In order to get the achievement for defeating a boss with a co-op partner, I actually had to defeat a remembrance boss. Thankfully, the only optional Remembrance boss that I still haven't defeated was the Hollow Crow. Also, as can be noticed by my incredibly bad judgments, I just didn't care about the boss anymore. It was the 4th or 5th time I was killing the boss, I don't even remember to be honest. But the thing is that these incredibly grindy achievements took all my energy and will to continue playing this game. Especially because I didn't get the Lords of the Fallen achievement. And of course, I started freaking out, because normally it is given automatically once you get all other achievements. But just to stress me out one more time, it was awarded only after restarting the game. Yes, we did it. All achievements in Lords of the Fallen. Let's see the stats. Let, let's see the stats. Level 196 and a total playtime of almost 110 hours. Around 20 of which I had to spend just farming enemies. I, I probably won't include it in the video, but I was farming every single enemy at least for one item. Uh, for some it was more, of course, uh, for more rare enemies. Well, it's time to quit this game and never play it again. In conclusion, I want to say that this was horrendous, awful, soul-crushing, diabolic and just any other synonym you can think of. I get that the developers wanted us to obtain absolutely every item, but when you have to farm one enemy for multiple hours, this just takes away all the will to play this game again. To quote my previous trophy hunting video, this one achievement made me hate this entire goddamn game. Also, please don't watch it, I was a dumb 16 year old with no knowledge on how to make good videos and it's also demonetized for reasons. Overall, the last few dozens of hours playing Lords of the Fallen, I had only one thought in my head and it was when will this stop? I know that this game is still receiving constant updates and it also received one while I was getting all achievements, but I just don't care anymore. And even when I was doing a new game plus run and completing new quests, it was also feeling very boring because they are uninteresting and simply not rewarding. And I know it's stupid to compare this game to The Elden Ring, but there each quest offered access to new locations with their own bosses and loot. But in Lords of the Fallen, it's the same locations in the same boss fights, except sometimes you speak with different characters, whose stories, to be honest, aren't even that interesting. Maybe I'm saying this because I'm just sick of this game, but when writing the script for this video, around a week after I finished it, I didn't remember any quests or particular characters of those quest lines which shows that they're not memorable and thus boring. 
I'm sorry that near the end this trophy hunting video became a review, but I think you need to understand that I'm not hating this game just because I had to do a lot of farming, but it's a combination of all these factors. And I am not against grinding in video games. It can actually be made pretty fun if you know how to make it fun. But that was all. Thank you often for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and see you in the next video. That will probably come out in like a year or something. I don't know, man.